Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast, the only podcast where apparently we're the only people that aren't in K-holes. Have you ever done ketamine? That's what a K-hole is? Yeah. Sounded like a K-cup, except where you go to die. A K-hole? Um... I mean, people that use Keurigs should die anyways, because what are they really drinking? Moldy water, apparently. Is, is that a thing? Yeah, because apparently people don't know how to clean out their Keurigs, and they get all moldy. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. There was a meme, I don't know if I sent it to you or not. I don't even know if I actually saved it, but I should have. I can, I can probably find it again, because I know where it was posted. And it was... um. It, it made it seem like they were like going to reach a point where they were like, this is the correct way to make and drink your coffee. But they literally just bashed every single method of making and drinking coffee. And to go back to your question, the answer is no, I've never done drugs. Okay. And so no. Okay. I've never done ketamine. Well, have you ever had any sort of prescription or procedure done where they might have given you ketamine? No. Okay. It's uh, Elon's like, I think we talked about that in a previous episode about how he's like doing it or like a big proponent for like the masses doing it, at least like periodically. Do you remember talking about that? Ketamine? Yeah. I thought it was LSD to open your mind or something like that. I'm pulling it up. Elon Musk details his prescription ketamine use, says investors should want him to keep using it. (laughs) That's the first headline that comes up from CNN from March, or yeah, March 18th. So actually, it was the day that we launched the show, March 18th, 2024. Joy. Joy. So what were I thought that ketamine is an inhibitor, not says okay so the first video headline says so elon what does musk, ketamine do elon musk says uh ketamine helps him get out of a negative state of mind it's actually beneficial uh for tesla according to him the drug helps him manage and then it cuts off it's like moment something so probably like it momentary. probably puts him to sleep that's what <laughs> i thought that ketamine would do musk says ketamine prescription in, is an investor's best interest <laughs> Okay, now I really need to pull up what does ketamine do to the body? I actually don't really remember. I was thinking it was along the lines of like Valium, only significantly stronger. Ketamine is a dissociative anesthetic used medically for induction and maintenance of anesthesia. So to get you under... Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's exact. That's exactly what it. How- it, is, it is also used as a treatment for depression and pain management. Because it probably like numbs you and makes you addiction relaxed. liability moderate high. Because you're so relaxed. It triggers glutamate production, which in a complex cascading series of events prompts the brain to form new neural connections. Interesting. That is surprising. So it helps so you. So he is with attributing by, his success to ketamine use. Big brain. Because it is establishing new neural connections. K hole gives you big brain, apparently. <laughs> that is <clears throat> interesting. So the reason that we brought this up is because it's hitting the news that Matthew Perry's assistant may have been the reason that he overdosed and there was a comment and i don't know what it was from it was it was out of context but it sounded like he said to his assistant based on the just the headline i didn't read the article didn't click anything it was just because i was looking at trends and when i clicked it to highlight to figure out why he was trending it was the like the three top news articles okay and it said uh something along the lines of give me the big one or something like that the big one yeah so is this in pill form? It's an injection, I believe. Yeah, that's what I thought. So what yeah. are the, what's the big one? Maybe like the big high, like 
instead of the moderate high, give me the big high. Can you guys tell that we don't know anything about drugs? <laughs> I can, the I'm, big one. Yep. Matthew. Give Perry. me the horse tranquilizer. Yeah. Uh, revelations about his death. Remind how actors' characters and their pers- real life personality can differ. Um, he never knew Matthew Perry, but prosecutors say the ketamine that killed him came from the actor's seeing an actor's dealer. That's a picture, I guess, of his dealer. Looks like somebody. He's like a white guy from Connecticut. Yeah, but it looks he looks familiar. Maybe he's just got one of those generic. He's got a generic NPC, white guy face. NPC faces. Uh, wonder, oh, never mind. It was a girl's name, and I was like, what is... Okay, never mind. Uh, so, yeah, it's a chat. They found a text chat with the alleged dealer indicating her brother paid for the ketamine through Venmo. Uh, after his death certificate came out, I texted him back and said, just so you know, the ketamine that you sold my brother was listed as his cause of death. Damn. Um, so why isn't the dealer being... I don't know. ...held responsible... I don't know. The assistant was obviously acting under Matthew Perry's direct order. So I wonder if what, what a woman. <laughs> okay. Who's the, uh, who's Jasmine Sangha? I don't know. Um, that's, it says on Thursday, Jasmine Sangha, the alleged dealer, was one of five people charged in an 18-count indictment related to the death of Matthew Perry. Oh, gotcha. So. Um, authorities detailed a haunting connection between the world-famous actor and Cody McLaurie, an aspiring personal trainer. Um, both died using ketamine allegedly supplied by the same dealer, a woman whose street name was the Ketamine Queen, prosecutor said. Damn. <laughs> so, Okay. While investigating Perry's death, the U.S. Attorney's Office said they uncovered an underground network of doctors and drug suppliers they claim were responsible for distributing the ketamine and potentially deadly controlled substance. Oh, a potentially con- I don't know, a potentially deadly controlled substance that contributed to Perry's death uh, in October at age 54. Singh Ha has pleaded not guilty to several drug-related charges, including one stemming from August of 2019, the year Cody McClurry died. Um, she is not charged directly in his death. Blah, blah, blah. We've reached out. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. The conversation about ketamine was amplified after Perry's death in large part because its uh, uses are varied. Ketamine is approved by the FDA as a short-acting anesthetic for humans and animals in a medical setting and it's often administered through an IV is not approved for any mental health disorders, but has become more commonly prescribed off-label for treatment of chronic pain, depression, and anxiety. So it's off-label use is what Musk is using it for. It's not illegal. He's still getting a prescription. He's not going through the ketamine queen. (laughs) I mean, he might be. I I doubt it. Like Somebody like Musk isn't even dealing with the people directly at all. Right, he has an assistant just like Matthew Perry he did. Probably, I bet I bet Musk literally has a doc, a medical doctor as an assistant. And in some he probably has more than one assistant. I'm sure. Probably has an assistant for every thing. He probably has a jerk off assistant. What? <laughs> a Monica Lewinsky type. Okay, <laughs> we just took a turn to the left over here. You don't think you don't think that's true. You don't think that rich people like that have like there are people signing on his behalf. Like he's not actually signing. There's like autographs. If it's like in person, you actually visually see. Do you want to get it. to be that rich and famous that you have a jerk off uh, assistant? No. That's, the answer is obviously yes. No. Hence the mm, no. That's your mouth, but um, <laughs> but. So for anything else, anything that's not in person, anything that's like signed a contract or anything like that, he's not signing it himself. He's got somebody else signing it. I could actually see Elon being the person that actually reads everything, Mm -hmm. but he's still not signing it for multiple reasons. 
One of which being he can say, I didn't sign it. <laughs> mm. If something bad comes up, you'd be like, that's not my actual signature. That's my assistant's assistant's signature. Well, now you're going down a rabbit hole of what if. So you're just speculating here. So anyway, this is that's a normal cover your ass thing. Like when people sign, we talked about this a couple episodes back about um, the. Oh my god, I can't think of his the uh, DD two fourteen. It's like signed on behalf of, mm-hmm. and it wasn't supposed to be. A, it's the uh, was a Minnesota douche, um, right? But it was somebody who was out for like medical leave or something. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's that's a normal thing. Like you you're signing in place of, but you're signing your signature, not there. Like you're not forging their signature. You're, you are signing on behalf of it. You're basically, um, what do you call that? A, uh, proxy. Yes. But I think the better term would probably be like a power of attorney. Except in this instance, I highly doubt that Elon Musk has a power of attorney. He would never Uh, relinquish control like that. uh, That man is a control freak. He would not relinquish control. But I mean, like for good, Exactly. Would you want to? So, would you want to give up? No, it's not a power of attorney at all because he wouldn't do that. But you can give. You can give like specific powers to specific. Like you can give only signing authority to somebody. You can give only medical decision authority to somebody. You don't have to give them the broad swath of everything. Do you think he's going to be the type of person who's going to be in a hyperbaric chamber hoping to come back later? No, he's going to Mars himself. He's gonna. He's gonna put his like. 80 year old body into the ship with the first crew with his jerk off assistant. (laughs) It's just going to be the two Um, of them. I think it was, I think it was black rifle uh, or it wasn't on their official channel. So it might've been like on Matt best or maybe JT's channel or something like that. But they came up with this. um, They were making fun of USA today because USA today took an AR 15 and it was like listing like, possible attachments like these deadly lethal attachments okay. a couple of years ago and they made a uh, possible attachment that was a um, pocket pussy that was attached to the rifle so every time you shot the recoil <laughs> it was a, it was a it was a, like an under barrel arm attachment that came down so every time you pulled the trigger <laughs> okay so that's the uh you need to pause it real um you need to pause it Looks like I need to pause it. All right, we'll be right back. And we're back. We had a school update. Because we, <laughs> the kid's very first day of school was canceled for hurricane. So he already has a makeup day. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Yay. Um, Which is the rest of the children's first, first day. day. Yeah. He, he, he jinxed himself. Mm-hmm. I think I, I said that. He was so excited on the orientation yeah. and the walkthrough. I don't have school I don't on their have first school day of on school. on their first day of school. I get to sleep in on their first day of school only to have a hurricane blow through and yep. his, fir- his first day of school get canceled. He has a, he told me he has a quiz today when I was driving and dropping him off. I was like, what is it? He was like, vocabulary. I was like, what's the best word? And he's like, none of them. I was like, what's the worst word? All, All of them. them. <laughs> yeah. He is, he's definitely a math, science, technology. He could give zero fucks about English lit. I don't like it. It's kind of weird to me to think of a high schooler doing like vocabulary unless it was like, like, so when you go through like medical school or any, like, you don't thing, remember, did you take AP English at all? Um, no. I okay. Took, so that's, that's part of AP English here in North Carolina, at least is, you have to meet like a certain requirement in, I don't know, vocabulary and one of my insights. friends, one of, one of my friends, SAT worthy words. One of my friends on Twitter um, is in college mm-hmm. and he's like, I think he's about my age, mm-hmm. like back in like getting another degree, not like his first. Mm-hmm. And he was like, <laughs> I got an email from my professor, my mm-hmm. English professor, asking if I used AI to write my paper uh-huh. because the rest of his classmates don't know any words longer than three syllables. Oh, my God. And so he he turned in all of his search notes and yeah. like the paper. The professor was like, oh, sorry. Yeah. I retract wow. my. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And honestly, 
The way that kids talk these days, I'm not surprised. You know, every time I think about that, like we did it, the generation before us did it. Mm -hmm. Some words get adopted, some fall into the abyss like rad. Nobody says rad anymore. Yeah, that's like like the fourth time you've brought it up on this podcast. But but what I'm saying is, uh, think how different South Africa, their English and like their slang was compared to ours, Mm -hmm. right? Think of uh, like a foreign entity that wants to like take over like intellectually like take over the u.s okay if if we continue to actually let slang like continue and actually Mm -hmm. get it in the dictionary and stuff like that it actually makes it harder and harder for these more like traditional languages to keep up because they don't have a direct translation they don't know what the fuck our kids are talking about so it is in some ways it is to the benefit of our country. And what are you looking up? No, that just made me think of something. What do you what'd you think of? Do you think do you think Matthew Perry's we, we didn't finish that out. Do you think Matthew Perry's assistant did it on purpose? Or do you think it was one no, of those things it like it made me think of my name in the urban dictionary? <laughs> spelled correctly? Yes. No, like spelled with the accent like no. yours? No. So I just wanted to read it out loud because it totally it popped into my brain hole when okay. you were talking about that. All right. So Nona in the Urban Dictionary. Okay. Nona is definitely the best, most kind, amazing, and beautiful girl that you will ever meet. If you have her, I cannot stress this enough. Don't mess it up. It will be the worst mistake of your entire life. She is amazing and beautiful, and every guy would be lucky to have her. Her dark, completed beauty does not, does, oh, sorry, does nothing to help you from falling madly in love. Also, anything she may seem tiny and cute and innocent at first, but she's really a little ninja of death. It will get... <laughs> when, you, when was this written? Uh, hold on. If you get her mad, she will hunt you down and she will kill you in your sleep. One thing to remember is that if you hurt her, she may say that she forgives you. And most of the time, she honestly does. But when she says she's done with you, she is done. She is an independent person, but she still needs someone (laughs) there for her when she's down. If she chooses you to be that person, do not hurt her. If she chooses you to be that person, do not hurt her. She may be great at giving advice, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't need it sometimes too. And although she may seem happy and perfectly fine almost all the time, she'll always have something bringing her down, but she'll never tell anyone because when she does, they never seem to care. Treat her like a queen, like your treasure, because sooner or later, you'll realize that she is dot, dot, dot. Have you met Nona? Question mark. So we know who wrote this. Um, it was posted November 8th, 2016. No. <laughs> no, somebody sent this to me like 2019. I had never heard it or seen it or anything. And Let's see what else WBW has written. Oh, only one definition. Do you have a, do you know anybody with the initials WBW? No. You don't know anybody with the initials WBW? Mm-mm. Maybe it's Walter White. <laughs> do you That's know who that funny. Is? Um, from Breaking Bad. Yeah. Interesting. But you know where that... Wait, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Was that his real name or was that his... No, that was his drug lord name and he got it like from a book. Right? I, don't, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I never saw it, but the name Walter White is iconic. So I do know that it's... Somebody like made Bad. the... So talking about Breaking Bad here for a second. Somebody made the um, uh, Ray Gun... It was Breaking Bad, like break dancing bad. <laughs> she, she, man. she issued a statement about how everybody's comments are so hurtful and blah blah Shut blah. Up. <laughs> the the one 
Her doing the sprinkler, isn't that what it called? I don't know. The Just one the sprinkler. The one chick with uh the fucked up chromosomes that was boxing in the Olympics. She's like trying to sue everybody who's like said anything. That's fucked up. Huh? You're not supposed to say that. Fucked up chromosomes? She does. Rude. She has, she has fucked up chromosomes. What do you mean by fucked up chromosomes? I don't remember Is the she exact. Like, she, do, she, are you saying that she has an extra chromosome? Like no, no, XXY? No, or? she has male chromosomes but presents as a female. Right. Is she XXY? No. Instead she's of. Not an extra one. She has male chromosomes and presents and developed as now a woman. I need woman. to Google who this person is. Who are you talking it's about? It's literally, I don't know what the fuck. Uh, she's from like Is it Pakistan boxing, or wrestle, yeah, boxing. boxing, Olympics, chromosome. <laughs> there were like two, I think. There were two different boxers. There were two? Yeah. Or two. I believe they were both boxers. La, 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 la. Is it Iman Kiliff? Yeah. yeah. Are you pulling up what it is? Yeah, they're just, at, it's just asking, um, does she or they have X, Y? That's not what I asked. And then fact check, X, Y. I probably just butchered her name. Uh, Algerian boxers disqualified 2023 world championships due to high levels of testosterone in her system. It was led to speculation. But her every condition that naturally elevates her testosterone levels, potentially something like uh, hyperandrogenism or androgen secreting tumor. Um which she has neither there was there was a there was a term that people were using mm-hmm. when they were like defending her the people that were like no it's a woman but she's this this and this and there was an actual term for it um what disease does she have Let's see what it's saying here uh yeah, nothing is really coming up just questions. Yeah, there's only there's just speculation. Anyways, but somebody somebody had maybe it was the other one because there there were two of them. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, but there's there was actually and a, they were allowed to compete and titled or however you say medaled medaled. Yeah. Okay, this one's from USA Today from August first. August 1st, 2024, Olympic Olympics. officials address gender eligibility as boxers prepare to fight. And of course, there's like 27 ads that I can't even read the fucking article. So? Um, Algerian boxer, I mean, I'm not even, and then Lin Yu of Taiwan, both were disqualified from the 2023 Women's Boxing World Championships when they reportedly failed gender eligibility tests. But this week, the International Olympics Committee confirmed the two boxers have been cleared to compete here in the Paris Games, as they both did at the Tokyo Games in 2021. Inclusive. The issues of so-called gender verification or sex testing have fueled discussion at the Olympics as the fighters prepare to enter the ring at North Paris Arena. Um, Khalif is a silver medalist at the 2022 World Champions and scheduled to fight Thursday. Um, but there's, it doesn't like, there's nothing about what they have or... IBA president Umar Kremlif said DNA test proved that they had XY chromosomes and were thus excluded. That's pertaining to last year's 2023. So. Okay. We can move on. Yeah. That's like, uh, okay. What do they have? Like what, what? Uh, I don't know. But Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul is now November 15th. Officially. You were almost spot on. You thought it was going to be like that next weekend. Well, I said that it was probably going to be. Outside of football season, if it was during football season, it would not be on a weekend, and I'm right, it's Friday. Ah. 
because they know even if you put it on Netflix for free, which I believe they still are, um, it's at t Stadium. Yeah, that's the other thing. So they're doing it at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Mm-hmm. So you can't do it when either a college right, or right. NFL team is playing. Right. And during that part of the season, you have – and I, th- I actually think Thursday night games are just forever now. It mm-hmm. used to be – there used to be only like two Thursday night games a, like per season. They were like oh, later really? in the season. Yeah. So I think Thursday night games are like forever now. So mm-hmm. we have Monday night games, Thursday night games – and Sunday games right. for the NFL. NFL. Mm-hmm. And then they have additional during certain holidays because mm-hmm. they play like on Christmas Day and stuff like that. And on um, Thanksgiving Day, right? Well, Thanksgiving Day is always a Thursday, so there's always... Oh, I just didn't even think about yeah, that. And it's, it's typically... But all, it's Thursday during the day, it, not Thursday night. It's typically the, the two Thursday games are typically always the Lions and the Cowboys, and then they n- not necessarily playing each other. Mm. But those are the two teams, I believe, that are always on on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Gotcha. So this would be the Friday before Thanksgiving, I'm assuming. Thanksgiving is not going to be the 14th of November. No. I think it's actually late this year. So it's either the 21st or the 28th. Yeah. So, yeah. So just like I said, they, they are not going to give viewership if they try and do. Plus, in November, you have college rivalry games. But there's nothing typically on a Friday, so that's why they picked Friday. Because typically, UFC and boxing are Saturday. The pri- or the uh, mm-hmm. uh, main card fight is typically like 10 p.m. or later. Mm-hmm. But that for like Eastern time, that right, is. Right. So I don't know. I don't know if it says what time, but it's probably going to be the same thing. I don't. You would have to be dumb. To go to an NFL stadium to watch a boxing match, you can't. You wouldn't be able to see anything. Yeah. It would. It would just be all on the TV screens, and you'd be looking up yeah. all the time. Yeah, not looking down at these two little specks. Now, given AT and T Stadium has like the biggest TV screen, mm. so then that's probably one of the reasons why. But like, if you're going to watch it on TV, just watch it on TV. Right. I'm not gonna pay for a ticket to be in person to watch it on TV. I bet a lot of the people who will be there will be comp tickets who are influencers and things like mm. that. Like I want you there live streaming on your whatever. No, cause somebody's got to pay for that. Jerry Jones wants his money. Who's Jerry Jones? The owner of the team in the stadium. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of Netflix. Netflix is, a streaming service and they're trying to get people on the streaming platform. So they're going to be like link in bio, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I'm just speculating here, obviously. Let's see what AP news says. Don't forget oh, and he, he uh, apparently swung at Jake Paul. What? Like apparently there was like a, they almost like had a fight right there. Tyson. Yeah. And Jake Paul. Yeah. At where? At the whatever event they were doing yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, maybe two days ago, maybe oh, it was Saturday. I had no idea. Um, no, that's wrong. There's, there's a the picture that they use is cited uh, as them doing something on May sixteenth. Like that's what the image they used was. It's not whatever just happened. Gotcha, because that was when they were yeah. originally promoting their original date back um, in what June. June or July, yeah. Something. He ended up fighting that other guy. And got fired by right uh, midget Connor, man Connor McGregor. Yeah. Um. Apparently, like, and it it actually kind of feels like at this point that like the writing's on the wall that he no longer wants to be just like a YouTuber that he actually wants to make boxing a career. Gotcha. Which everybody that's done something like that, even if they found success, like there's been some like real good, like science educational YouTubers and stuff that I've watched that have like moved on to do like major productions for like movies and TV series and stuff like that for like major networks. Right. After like three years, two years, they always end up like going back to YouTube. But the problem with that is your content has now become stale. Your Mm -hmm. users have fallen off. You didn't keep up with trends and stuff like that. So I've seen Mm -hmm. lately um, like Veritasium used to upload really, really frequently. 
Okay. And then he went off and was doing some stuff like that. Now he still uploads, but they're like long form videos and they're like, they're not exactly timely. Like uh, something might happen today. Right. But he, because of the production quality and scripting and recording and on-site visits and going to universities and finding subject matter experts and stuff, he might not put out something about it for like two months. Gotcha. But he'll put out like a really big video. But what I noticed last week or the week before is one of his videos that I watched was really long, Mm -hmm. but it had content in it that I thought I had seen before. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes a YouTuber, be it, you know, gun YouTube or education YouTube, whatever, it doesn't matter. Sometimes like something will change and their video will be demonetized or they'll get copyright striked or something like that because they had too much of something in there and they'll re-edit it and then re-upload the entire video. Mm -hmm. So I thought that's what it was. And then I realized it was a compilation video. He took a bunch of his old content that was all related and made it one video and uploaded it. That makes sense. But like... And you watched it again. I didn't watch the whole thing once I figured out what it was. Right. But you still started it. Yeah. And... But that... So... He knew that you were going to do that. So that... And all of his other followers. But that brings up one of the issues and the trends with um, YouTube over the years. And I think we've talked about this, about how people used to have a, like a clips channel. Everyone would have their main channel where the main content is, and they didn't want to publish out of sync of their normal schedule. They're like, they're like excerpts, like the five minute, seven minute clips from like a two hour Rogan episode. Okay. So you had like Rogan's channel and then you would have JRE clips or whatever it is. Okay. And that's where you would put like the five minute segments of like a rant about something. Okay. Now people have gone almost completely away from that. Have you been doing short still for us? Yeah. I'm just, I'm behind like almost 10 episodes. Like I said, have you been still doing shorts for us? No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying I'm behind like timeline wise. I'm trying out something where I'm cutting clips farther back and spacing them out better instead of trying to promote this up. This is 72 instead of promoting this this week, this will be promoted in two weeks. So people might revisit it. Okay. So we'll see. Um, there was a clip from yesterday, yesterday's episode that I might run like this week or today's up yesterday for people watching this today for us recording it. There was a, there was, it was talking about the uh, inflatable tanks and stuff, the bounce houses. I wanted to snip that out. Okay. Because it was funny and you laughed. You did. You did your big cackle laugh when you found out the bounce houses were invented in war. <laughs> All right. What's our next topic? Um, well, I was still skimming to see. It didn't, it doesn't say anything about where, about if it, oh, yeah, it does. Right at the end. The fight will stream on Netflix. Um, will It will be an official bout. Uh, though contested with eight two-minute rounds and heavier gloves than usual. I don't know why heavier that Heavier gloves than usual. Wouldn't that just slow them down? Make it harder to punch? Um, I think heavier gloves are more padded. So like if you think about like the UFC, they they don't wear gloves. Okay. They have like they'll have like tape and stuff sometimes or like something to protect their wrists. Okay. But typically because they need to use their hands, okay. they don't have they don't wear gloves. Oh, you get okay. hit with a fucking knuckle, that oh, hurts. You right. get hit with a glove from a pro boxer, it's still gonna fucking hurt. Right. But it's not a knuckle breaking your jaw. It's your jaw getting dislocated. Okay. Gotcha. So maybe I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm not a boxer. So is this the boxing version of putting on kid gloves, which is a euthanism for just making things a little bit softer because Tyson is old? No. Um, I think if I remember right, it also has to do with speed. Like the, the speed of your punch is impacted by the weight of the gloves. It's not necessarily like, because the power comes through comes from the follow through. Okay. So, like, if I were to hit you, 
That's not where it hurts. It's me. You guys see this? Through. He's hitting me on camera. Wow. Ow. It hurt. Ow. So the abuse. The, Ow. Okay, whatever. The, the I the, shouldn't laugh about that. The pain and damage comes from the follow through, not from the contact. Okay. So it's how hard can you that's why when you see them, they okay, come but, in contact, push through, but turn their hips. But was there an increased weight on their gloves? In the last match when he played against or Fought not against. played. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. I against didn't the say. other guy. I'm wondering if it's specifically because of Tyson and his oldness. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just speculating here. This whole episode is about speculation. Him and Elon, me and Tyson. Oh, wow. The Associated Press is shitting on the fight. The truest boxing match on the card might be the one that precedes it. <laughs> the women's super lightweight championship fight that comes before the Tyson and Damn. Paul fight. Yeah. They're saying that that's girl the real power. boxing. They're saying that's the real boxing match and theirs isn't. Girl power. That's Get funny. it. That's funny. All right. What's our next topic, Andrew? I don't know. You can read the list over here, right? Yeah. Was this one of the ones you want to talk about? No. Why not? Okay. What about what about this? I don't know when if, that is. If you want to pull that up, that's fine. I didn't have anything ready for that. Never mind then. I told you the things that we can talk about this real quick. Okay, go for it. Take the it away. um, the not Kaylin Clark, but the other rookie that everybody has been talking about, the one that was like bashing Kaylin Clark initially. I don't know if they still are or not, but. Um, she was the one that was like that she wouldn't be anything without me too or something like that. Um, but anyway, so your phone's going off. It's it's the camera. Um, but they're like the the news headlines from the Olympics after so the men and women both beat France okay. for the, in the gold medal game. So men won gold, but women only won gold. only France. That's who France made it to the game, oh, just like okay, okay. USA got, made got, it. To oh, the game. Okay, gotcha. Sorry. So obviously, I didn't watch any of the Olympics. So the I'm news. Just catch up right now. The news. Okay. Per their traditional clickbaity bullshit, mm -hmm. ran headlines like "Without Caitlin Clark and without blah, blah blah, USA prevails in the gold medal game." Blah blah. blah. Gotcha. And she responded, "The the other girl, mm -hmm. I can't think of her name now." Right, because um, Caitlin Clark's name is the only one that people can remember. No, 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 no. Well, okay, sure. But she responded and she was like, can you just let the players that were on the team like have their moment? Can you talk about them instead of us for it once? It makes me think of a headline from a couple of years ago when I think maybe it was the, like the last Olympics or something and it was a runner and, you know, she got the gold medal, only it was titled uh, So-and-So's Wife received medal. Yeah. Like, let me make the correction for you. Here's her fucking name. Yeah. <laughs> received medal. Yeah. So like they, one of two things, mm -hmm. they knew that nobody cared. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, let's plug in their names. Be like, without them, they still won. And the, the other chick responded, I think, I believe they said it was like on Instagram or something like that. She mm -hmm. was like, can, can you like, let them celebrate their fucking moment. I wasn't there. I wasn't on the team. You can talk about me when I play in four years or whatever. It's like, it's obviously not verbatim what she said, but that's the gist of what she said is like, when I have my chance, you can talk about me. Like, how about you celebrate the people that actually fucking played? Since you're talking about that, I want you to pull up. Um, I don't even know how you search this, but um, women's basketball pre-game like what what is it called um that back door that they all come in after they've gotten off the bus and they're they've arrived to the, the stadium arena? yeah yeah yeah. um it's like turned into a fashion show essentially it's always that, been like that well i didn't know that so pull it up i want you to like judge these outfits on for live the women? yeah for the women specifically i want you specifically to judge these outfits wnba i don't know how you'd search it but um Entering arena clothing. I don't know. Cam Newton was like notorious in the NFL for wearing like the weirdest shit. Right. I do actually remember that. 
The hat? No, that was Pharrell. <laughs> Is, no, he, if, like, if you just look up Cam Newton, you'll probably, without saying anything else. Yeah, no, probably, I actually, I did, and I d- didn't even watch football, but yes, I did know about that. But, Is the w- WNBA entering a fashion rivalry? Yeah, yeah. I, w- I want you to judge these outfits. These outfits are, so these women are obviously are all like, six foot these plus. Are like boys' clothes. These women are obviously all six foot plus, but then half of them are definitely dressing more on the femme side and half of them are dressing more on the masculine side. And so the ones wearing heels are the ones that I specifically want you to judge their outfits. It's literally only showing pictures of the men. It Mm. opened. The article is about women. Look, the article is about women. That's the, a woman. No, no, watch, watch. <laughs> okay, just making sure that as, you know that's, as, just, that's as a woman. As, I, as soon as I scroll past this, men, men, men. All right, go to men. a different. Go to a different article. This is just like a that looks like it's just in general. It's fashion. I'm talking specifically about these people. Sure, but like, yeah. So that's that's in the hallway behind. Yeah. None of this looks. Like fashion, this yeah, just no, looks no, no. like a bunch of weirdos. Right? No, um, androgyny is now fashionable <laughs> in the WNBA. That's the caption. Somebody, somebody made a a meme of um, like the clothing trends, and it was like men and women in the nineties or early two thousands, and men and women now, and they literally had like swapped clothes. Hmm. No, so I I wanted so people like. I do like full blogs and stuff about this, but I do think it's pretty comical. Um, some of the outfits because they're so tall that you can tell that they're not designed for tall people. And so even though, though the cropped look is in right now, these are cropped, but not intentionally cropped. They're mm-hmm. cropped because they're so tall. What's wrong with her? Like she's like trying to make each pant leg like a, a dress. Okay. Why? Bell bottoms are coming back in. I appreciate the flare. That's not belt. It's cut. Yeah, that's that's just like a variation of a bell bottom. Whatever. I appreciate the flared leg. A very thick legs. So they call it a arena. Arena fashion. (laughs) Arena. I just saw arena. Damn it. No, I can't find. It's like arena, like walk, walk through or something like that. Tunnel walk. Ooh, tunnel walk. Instead of a catwalk, it's a tunnel walk. Yeah. This just looks like normal weirdos. Normal weirdos, but also that's what you say the about business of fashion. So <laughs> you say about clothes in general. So I want you for somebody who. Give zero fucks about fashion to please judge these outfits. It literally, it just looks like the weird random shit that people like this wear. People like this. That's a very broad statement. People, when they're on that stage and they know people are going to see them, like some people do it to be ironic. Some people do it because they think it's trendy. Some people do it because they're paid to. And just this, this, there's nothing new about this to me. Okay. It's just, it's it's ignorable. Ignorable. Wow. Okay. I'm not buying any of that. I'm not buying any of it for you. I didn't ask you to. I know that's on, like it's it's this is a nothing. I just wanted you to judge it. I didn't ask you to buy it for me. How the WNBA tunnel walk became a fashion marketing goldmine. Okay. We'll send them some of our shirts. See if anybody wears it. Somebody might. There's there's been times when I've seen like um, like small, not even just YouTubers, but just content creators or whatever in general, mm-hmm. where they'll send a bunch of stuff, and then people will wear it just because they're like, oh, whatever. This looks like a cool shirt. They don't even know anything about the content creator. Don't even care. They're just like, I like the design. Mm-hmm. And then they and then wear that it. content creator blows up. Yeah. Yeah. But that. Involves some serious stalking to find out what their address is to mail it. No, to. that's 
almost all these people either have a uh, publicist or agency that you can directly mail stuff right to. And it's publicly available information. All right, Andrew, you get right on it. You have to order one shirt that's too small, one shirt that's too large, because they're either going to wear one or the other or both. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? There's people that like, they're like, oh, today I really want the baggy shirt. Tomorrow I want the skin tight shirt. Okay. You do that. You walk around sometimes wearing a skin tight shirt and sometimes you want to wear a baggy hoodie. Anyway. Big brain. Andrew, what's next on our topic list? I can't read it still. So what's next on our topic list? Cucumber recall? Okay, sure. Take it away. <laughs> Since I love cucumbers so much, you, you did not inform me about this cucumber re- I just recall. found out about it today. I literally just found out about it when you added it to our topic list. That duck is dead. <laughs> it's E. coli. So the kids so, just went over there and so, poisoned it. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have this sweet little duck in the neighborhood who's got one leg. And they said, it's, they said one of its eyes is infected. Yeah. Too. And, and cucumbers are the requested snack. So somebody wrote a backstory for this duck. Yeah. Charlotte. And it's apparently named Gigi. Charlotte took cucumbers to the duck this morning on her bike ride. And, and then, then literally five minutes later, he's like, Oh, by the way, cucumber recall. Also five minutes prior i had just eaten cucumbers myself so thank you for letting me know after i ate You're cucumbers welcome. and the neighborhood duck the neighborhood one-legged duck salmonella outbreak linked to recalled cucumber cdc says um so thank you for attempting to murder me and the one-legged duck i didn't do anything you bought them for yourself the neighborhood self poison this person doing looking at us with their eyes and stuff. Uh, Nationwide salmonella outbreak resulting in dozens of hospitalizations and hundreds of infections linked to recalled cucumbers, according to the CDC. Um, Following a months long investigation by health officials. So I've been been eating cucumbers every single day for years at this point. As of July 2nd. So going back a while here, um, the CDC said Wednesday that they had, Received reports of 449 people infected with one of two strains of salmonella in 31 states and and Washington, D.C., including 125 people who have been hospitalized, though no fatalities have been reported yet. Wash Um, your cucumbers, people. Well, might not just be on the surface. Salmonella, I believe, is motile, so it can move. Really? Yeah. Um, of the 180 people sick and 129 reported eating cucumbers, which suggests the salmonella break is tied to the previously recalled cucumbers. Two Florida-based growers likely supplied the cucumbers and are no longer growing or harvesting. Um, an inspection of produce company site found salmonella in samples of canal water. Uh, including a strain that had been reported in some sickened people. Other salmonella strains were detected in soil and water samples, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to figure out like like what brand or what store. It just says who grew them. Does your cucumber say who grew it or what brand it is? Not a brand, I don't believe, but yes, uh, origin of where it was grown. But I specifically only like English cucumbers. Bedner, so. Bedner growers, growers of Boynton Beach and Thomas Produce Company of Boca Raton. So look at your little stickers. See what they say. Maybe you need to go make a return. <laughs> well, they, it's too late. They're in my stomach. I can't return what's in my stomach. Do they take cucumber returns? Uh, yeah. Probably not because yeah. it was, no. it's, pro- it's probably put somewhere else. They don't want that back. <laughs> <laughs> What? What? What is this? What? Cucumber boy. What? Somebody. Oh, okay. They're showing on TikTok how cucumbers can be used in various recipes. But I did not think that that's what cucumber boy was going to lead to. 
Mm. Especially after what I just and said. And you were willing to click on it to watch what Cucumber it's, Boy was going to no, do. No, it says, so it says cucumbers, that is very telling. No, it says cucumbers have become the target of, of a social media trend for cucumber salads. But when you started off with cucumbers have become the target Why? of a because social media trend on you TikTok. You thought he was going to toss his own salad on video? Yeah. That's ever escalating weird nonsense, pushing pushing the envelope. Big number. What is Forbes is weird. Big number. 1.35 million. That's the estimated number of people who have been infected with salmonella in the U.S. every year. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Big number. Mm. News peg. That's literally what their, their headline tags are. News peg. The FDA, the FDA and CDC... Launched an investigation into salmonella outbreak, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the FDA determined the cucumbers were likely sold by Fresh Start Produce, a produce company based in Delray, Florida, which sells produce from various growers. Fresh Start Produce issued a voluntary recall days after or days before the investigation was announced, saying that some of its cucumbers tested positive for salmonella. The cucumbers were shipped over four days in May to 14 states. The company said Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia. It is unlikely the cucumbers are still in stores at this time. So you might be safe. Currently. From that album. But I definitely was consuming cucumbers during that time period. Did you get sick in May? No. You sure? Yeah. But I always wash my cucumbers very diligently before I slice them and dice them. Like I said, I don't think it's always. I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I definitely consumed cucumbers during that time period, but I did not get sick. So hopefully. You probably had it. You probably just fought it off. What? So since we're talking about an outbreak, why does why don't we? We move, have to end the episode soon. Move it on to monkeypox then. Okay. We probably shouldn't have said that word, though. It's racist. Okay, M-pox, isn't yeah. that? Which is also racist, they're saying. What? Yeah, it's and plus it's probably a banned word on YouTube. M-P-O-X? So when the plague of 2020 started, mm-hmm. they had to call it like the thing and stuff. Like anytime, the thing? Anytime anybody used the, anybody said covid or coronavirus or anything like that so do you think we're going to go down to another shutdown no i shouldn't go buy more toilet paper and paper towels right now there's probably going to be morons that do that stuff but there there's no way like companies are not going to do it Mm -hmm. people are not going to do it you're going to have a small subset of people who are going to run around wearing masks again which they still are in some (laughs) cases still are while they're fucking driving too, I cannot get over that. Like, yeah. dude, you are in the car alone. Take that fucking mask off. Yeah. <sighs> so, no, I the the government knows it's it's still too fresh in people's mind. Mm-hmm. Businesses, the kids are, still, are going back to school. They are not going to switch it to virtual learning. Businesses are still pissed off, mm-hmm. and we're in an economic downturn right now so businesses are already hurting they're not going to close they're not they're not they're not going to voluntarily screw themselves Mm -hmm. but we'll see well the uh what's his name tim walls one of his uh governor executive orders or whatever was like a mandatory um what's that called when you can't be outside after a certain time What's that word? Curfew. Yeah. He had a mandatory curfew and he had police literally marching through the streets, shooting people with paintball guns. Who is this person? The person that's running for vice president currently. Yeah. And he was the governor of what state? Minnesota. And this was, but this was during COVID. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but still, oh like, <laughs> if he would do that in his state, dude. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's video of people like standing on their porch recording because they're like, what is going on? And then they, they getting shot by a paintball yeah. for being on their own porch. Yeah. That's insane. You're not insane. allowed to be outside. Ah. Insane. 
go go into recirculated air where you can't get away from the disease. Yeah. Instead of outside where it would die. <laughs> Insane. Okay. I think we did like three topics. Okay. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye. All right, bye. Are we signing off? Yeah? Okay, bye.